I want to start off by asking you all to close your eyes. Everyone, yeah, I'm not going to fool you. Everyone, thank you, Erica. Now, I just want you to visualize this. You are the head honcho of a family. Don't open your eyes until I tell you to. Now, you wake up, you go to work, and you stretch your arms. You get ready, you're out the door. What you do for a living, you are a salesperson. And you have a product that you know will sell. But who do you want to sell to? So you have to go to many corporations, many board meetings. So you don't go to one, you don't go to two, you don't go to three, four, twenty. You go to 75 different board meetings in one day. You go to these board meetings, and they all love your product, and they really want to impress you or your loving this. But there's a thing. They all have these buffets, huge buffets, free food, flaming yawn, duck, lobster, and you eat and you eat and you eat until you can't eat anymore. Then you go to the next board meeting. Same scenario. You eat and you eat and you eat until you can't eat anymore. You go to the next board meeting, so on and so forth, until you went to these 75 board meetings and you ate yourself to death. Not with You go home. All you want to do is relax. You went to all these corporate board meetings, you're full, you just want to take a nap. Understandable. Well, the missus walks over. She starts yelling at you. You're home late, you didn't do this, you have to help with this. And then she starts complaining that she's hungry. Well, she's talking about food and now you're talking about all the food that you ate. Well, now she's mad. You're saying, well technically, honey, I did bring it home, it's in my stomach. Well, she didn't find that too amusing and now she's yelling. Well, what do you do? You say, honey, I have an idea. She listens. You go, if you're willing, I might be willing, sort of, kind of, maybe, throw up in your stomach. Okay? She thinks about it. She's like, that's disgusting. And she goes, no, no. And you go, no, 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 no. It makes sense. If I throw up in your stomach, I'm not hungry, you're not hungry, everyone's happy. She says, okay. So you go over to there, you give her a big kiss, and you just vomit. You vomit right in her mouth, and then she eats it. Yeah. Well, now everyone's happy. No one's hungry. You just want to relax now. Well, you look down, and you have ticks all over your legs. You pluck them off, you flush them, all right, no big deal. You look down again, there's more ticks. I right, know, just follow me. And then you start sneezing, you're coughing, you have a runny nose, and you're vomiting, unwilling. So you go to the doctor. You go, doctor, what's wrong with me? And he goes, oh, I hate to break it to you, but you're going to die. And you go, why? He says that you have some type of disease. It doesn't really matter. You're scared. You ask, how long do you have to live? And he looks at his watch, and he goes about three seconds. Before you can even respond, you're dead. Now open your eyes. You can open your eyes now. Now, in one word, what would you describe that day in? Gross. Chaotic. Chaotic. All right, well, see, I just described to you the life and day of a honeybee. Now, obviously, honeybees don't get in suit and ties. They don't go to corporate meetings or whatever. But if we were a honeybee, this is something that we would experience. So I'm going to take you from beginning to end of the life of a honeybee. Well, we'll start with gathering nectar. These are the work bees. These are the work bees that are going to the corporate meetings, 75. And what I meant by that was that these bees will go to 50 to 100 flowers per visit. They will gather the nectar, and in this picture you see a work bee uh, sucking nectar off a flower. Now, they're going to be coming home to the home bees, which these are the wives. These are the bees that are saying, I'm hungry, give me food. So, the work bee that has all this nectar is going to throw up in this bee's mouth. This bee, I know, this bee will take that nectar and turn it into honey using chemical and physical changes because Nectar is about 18, I'm sorry, honey is about 18% water, and nectar is about 90. And our end result is that. Well, it looks appetizing now, but now that you figure that this is because bees are regurgitating into each other's mouths, maybe you don't want to eat it. Well, that's understandable, but you also have to look at it from the bee's point of view. Remember how I said that the bee died? Well, take a look at this. CCD, what is it? Colony Collapse Disorder. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's when the bees in a colony die. Well, why does this happen? To be honest, I don't know. Scientists don't know. You don't know? Nobody knows. But there are some theories. 
For instance, the Israel Acute Paralysis Virus. Obviously, this originated in Israel, and it's found in so many beehives. Now, here's the thing. Every single colony that suffers from CCD was positive for this virus. But there's a catch. A lot of colonies that didn't suffer from CCD still have this virus. So clearly, this cannot be the cause. Well, what about pesticides? Pesticides are toxic. If a bee is exposed, a large majority of these bees will die. But in these last few years, there's been pesticides that, made, that were made that aren't as toxic. But even though they're not lethal, they still kill the bees. Well, what does this mean? These pesticides harm the bee's memory. Now, if the bee goes out, travels miles and miles and miles to get all this nectar from all these flowers, it's going to forget where its hive is. And it's going to lose two essential things for it to live, shelter and food. If any of us were to lose two of those things, we would surely die too. And then there's the furrow destructor mite. Now, this is related back to the ticks that I was mentioning. In Western bees, over here in America, Canada, Mexico, our honeybees, these are very common in the hives. And this, these, this mite originated over in Asia. But here's the thing. These mites kill our bees, but they don't kill the Asian bees. Why is this? Well, because this originated in Asia, the bees had more time to adapt to it. They now have defense mechanisms that prevent them from getting harmed from this mite. Our bees over here in the West, do not. But again, colonies that have CCD don't all have this. So, in conclusion, bees are underestimated. The next time that you see a bee and you swat it, you kill it, you find them annoying, just think of how hard of a life they have. They have to go out miles and miles and miles for work. I'm sure you guys can relate, but how many of you can relate to dying at the end of a year span? Thank you.